I think we're going to, as, as Bimiana said, we're going to look at how this, uh, how this applies in a, in, in, in a practical sense, looking at three great case studies. Um, but I think the interesting thing at the end of it, what we would like people to take away from this, is uh, really how genuine it can be or is the relationship between brands and consumers. I think it's interesting that a lot of the discussions that have been going on here are more egalitarian relationships. And here we're looking at a different sort of power change. You know, the big brands that want to engage with consumers. Um, and uh, well, we've got uh, three great cases. There's a, the CNN Ecosphere, which is a brilliant case of using how people generate a climate of opinion. Then we're going to look at Curators of Sweden, which is a, a, a fantastic exercise, which I won't say any more about, because if you don't know anything about it, it's going to be great. So I, I don't want to reveal anything. And unfortunately, the Lego builders of Infinity, uh, Infinity uh, Till couldn't come, which is a pity, because that was a nice counterbalance to the, 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 the serious side, perhaps, of, of these two first case studies. This is Till's work is very playful. And uh, well, it's a pity. Um, I'm not going to say anything else. The interesting people are, 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 are Miles and Patrick, so uh, I'm going to present Miles, and he's going to take you through the, the CNN case study. Thanks very much. Yeah, firstly, uh, thank you very much for having me, and uh, on behalf of the team, we're really honored to be here, to be at this wonderful festival in this beautiful city, which is full of incredible design. Um, yeah, I'm here to tell you about the, the case we did for CNN, for the, uh, the hashtag COP17 Ecosphere project. Uh, firstly, my name is Miles. Um, I come from, from Cape Town originally, but I work in Berlin at the moment at an agency called Heimat Berlin. And uh, yeah, two years ago, we received a, a brief from our, one of our clients, CNN International, to create an advertising campaign for a TV show. Um, and this is the TV show. It's called Road to Durban, a Green City Journey. Now, this would be uh, every week or every two weeks on CNN International, which would actually, you, you were able to watch it in, in Barcelona because it's part of the international broadcast. And yeah, they wanted us to create a campaign which said, tune in tonight at 8.30 and yeah, watch this show. Road to Durban, a green city journey. Um, we're always thinking about briefs in quite a negative way. Uh, and the negative people inside of us said, what is this show about? Like, why would I want to watch this? Um, and the more we, we spoke about it, the more we discussed with the client, we realized that this was actually about the international conference on climate change in Durban of, in South Africa. Which, which is happening at the end of 2011. And this, this uh, conference is called COP17. And the last conference that was this big and this import, important was a conference in Kyoto, where they created the Kyoto Protocol. And so this was a sort of a, a super important sort of world-changing conference. And this show was going to start a road trip um, through the world, going to cities that were you know, looking at sustainability and and what they called green cities. And in the end, arriving at this conference and, and basically taking the information from the, the climate change conference and broadcasting it to the world. Um, this, this for us was kind of boring and it was kind of weird because we, we don't really have much faith in these climate change conferences as an ad agency. I mean, since Kyoto, I mean, Kyoto already, America had pulled out of Kyoto. Um, they made laws for the world to follow, but one of the biggest superpowers wasn't even involved. Every COP conference since Kyoto was also labeled as a sham or as a total failure. Um, so we got more and more negative. And in the brief, we decided to find the core of this TV show, which was climate change. And we thought to ourselves, what could we do around the topic of climate change? And how could we make this whole conference and therefore the show more accessible and more interesting to people? So we developed a strategy, and we thought, you know, this conference is happening in Durban. It's, it's a closed thing. It's heavily, heavily policed, heavily secured. Um, the UN are inside, uh, and the world is outside. And there, there's a bunch of people inside that are going to have this conversation. They're going to have this discussion. And, you know, the rest of the world are going to be outside of this discussion. They're going to be left out. So our first idea was, 
to bring people closer to the story and make them part of the story and let them help shape the story and actually try and connect people to this conference, try and bring their voices, their opinions, their whatever, and, and, and bring those, those voices from outside the conference into the conference. And at the same time, to bring these voices onto international television via CNN. So therefore, invite the world to a conference that they are not invited to. We wanted to flip the script. Um, we wanted to do something for CNN that people didn't expect. What they expected was that you have the UNFCC, which is the United Nations Framework on Climate Change. They're going to go to Durban, they're going to make some legislation, or they're going to make some business deals, and in the end, CNN is going to become a, a sort of a communication platform for the UN to reach the rest of the world. So that's why we have this, this pyramid at the top is the UN giving information, CNN as the, as the delivery mechanism, and then the viewer at the bottom. And that's what the viewer expected as well. They expected that the show would be something that, basically a TV show full of empty promises, of, of rhetoric, of, of, of nothing really. And to, to flip the script, we had to do that. We had to invert the pyramid. We had to think about bottom up. We wanted to take the, the ideas and the thoughts and the problems and everything from, from the viewer and bring that up to the UN. And use, again, using CNN as a communication platform. So the CNN hashtag COP17 Ecosphere Project was born. And out of this negativity and out of this, these, these problems that were kicking around in our mind, we came to a solution. And the solution was basically to involve people and to use design. November 2011, the UN invited representatives of 194 states to Durban to talk about climate change at the 17th Conference of the Parties, COP17. This time CNN didn't just broadcast the climate change conference to the world, but also brought the world to the climate change conference with a hashtag. This is the CNN Ecosphere, a digital ecosystem growing from thousands of tweets about climate change. A real-time visualization of the global discussion on the internet. Every tweet tagged with HashCop17 became part of one of the numerous plants representing topics like sustainability or carbon. Their size and color reflecting the intensity of the evolving conversation. In the weeks before the conference, CNN called for contributions with a press, online and on-air promo campaign. This is really where you can plant your idea and watch it grow. And the project began to spread via social media. Even other TV broadcasters called upon their viewers to join the global conversation with hashtag COP17. And as tweets poured in from around the world, the ecosphere began to flourish. Then the ecosphere emerged inside the COP17 conference with a dynamic digital installation, connecting the 20,000 delegates with the global discussion outside. A live 3D hologram showed the ecosphere's development, while a video wall broadcast incoming tweets. From COP17, CNN then brought the global discussion back to the airwaves. Tweets were read out on air, and their thoughts discussed and debated by international COP17 delegates. At the end of the conference, delegates were presented with a digital book, documenting the growth, statistics, and most popular content from the project. In the end, the ecosphere got more people involved in a climate change conference than ever before. Today, the ecosphere displays over 220,000 tweets from around the world. I'm growing. Okay, so that's where we, we ended up. Um, I have to give you some notes to that film, um, that uh, case film. Um, there was a part in the film where, you said, where it said that um, tweets were, were taken from the ecosphere and, and read out on air and discussed. That sequence is the show we were supposed to advertise. Um, that is the show, Road to Durban, A Green City Journey. So what we've actually done is created like a full loop. We called people to contribute, to tweet, to talk 
um, brought their information or brought their, their voices into the ecosphere, then brought the ecosphere onto television, um, and then used that as, as, a, as a platform for on-air discussions. In that discussion that you saw there, there was a panel of four or five people. Um, if you, you may not recognize the faces, the one gentleman is the executive chairman of Greenpeace International. There's also the senior advisor to, to um, Obama's, um, uh, Obama's government, the, the senior advi advisor to the Chinese delegation, and the former uh, prime minister of um, Ireland. So actually what was happening in the show is that you know, people's, people's views, people's questions were actually brought in and, and really brought into the conference. And this was like, a, like another session that was created around the ecosphere. Um, once we had this idea, our idea was basically to, to show uh, the UN, to show the world, this, this climate change topic, this climate change discussion, and how big it was, to aggregate things, to bring everything into one place and say, look at this, and it's gaining more and more, um, more, and more attention, more and more voices. Um, and this idea of growth is where we started. So we started with that plant of thought, watch it grow. And we, in, in order for that idea to grow, we had to get a great team of people around us uh, and, and great team of partners to, to bring this forward. And this was the team. I need to, I need to mention that CNN was uh, a crucial part of this team. As you can see, um, the project goes right through into broadcast formats. Um, there's on-air promotions. There's uh, promotions on CNN.com. So this was something that a client really had to embrace and kind of run with as well. Of course, then there's Heimat, which is uh, my agency where I'm working. We, we spoke with Stink Digital, uh, both in in London and New York, they were working in parallel, so we were able to, to get longer days. Um, and then, of course, there's Mini Vegas, which is the design studio, which made these beautiful, uh, this beautiful ecosphere come to life. Um, and they are located in Amsterdam as well as Los Angeles. So we had quite a big team of people in different countries where we were able to work, I guess, 16, 18 hour days sometime. Um, so everyone was kind of working on this platform from different parts of the world uh, to kind of fast track it into existence. So that's where we started, um, with this idea of growth. We, we weren't quite sure what the ecosphere was going to look like. We just knew that it had to be a visualization. It had to work from Twitter, because Twitter was the easiest way to make a short, sharp point. And of course, to use this hashtag, hash COP17. Um, as we, but then we needed to develop this algorithm. And of course, this is not really our, our part of the, the deal with the ad agency. Um, the guys at Mini Vegas had to design this algorithm to create the rules of growth and to create the rules of what came in and where it was placed. So let me tell you a little bit about the algorithm. These are, this video is just um, some stills from the, the design steps and the technical steps leading up to the ecosphere. Basically, what we needed to do is firstly create something that was organic. And what the guys did is they actually looked at nature. They looked at the plant world. They looked at biology so that, so that the, the conditions and the, the growth, uh, the growth um, um, aspects of the ecosphere would fit those from nature. So for example, a tree will grow towards the sun, it will always grow in, in a shape like that. Um, a tree will grow, as it gets, as it gets taller, it will grow wider. Um, and each of, uh, a tree is not one thing, it's pockets, it's uh, branches. And so what we were able to do is to create a tree which was a part of a topic. So for example, if people were tweeting about carbon, um, the carbon tree would grow. And the tree has different branches, and these different branches were able to cluster tweets which spoke about, for example, carbon, uh, the carbon markets, for example. So there would be a part of the carbon tree, like one branch, which would be based on carbon markets. So we were able to take the chaos of Twitter and somehow arrange it into and order it so people, when they went into the carbon tree, they could start to see pockets of conversations, clusters of conversations, as you were surfing through this environment. So there you can see a tree that is growing. Um, as it's growing, it's changing colors. Um, the first one is a little bush over here, which is 114 tweets. And in the end, this is a two and a half thousand tweet tree. As it's growing, it's changing color. So when you look at the ecosphere on first glance, you can immediately see what is getting more, inf what is getting more attention based on size and color. Um, over here, you can see a sort of a still layer. Along the bottom of the website, we've got a very, very simple um, menu system where we can actually 
uh, go from tree to tree via the, the menu tab. Um, and then, of course, we have the trees growing out of it. The, the way the algorithm works in terms of um, sorting information is quite amazing. Firstly, the algorithm would look for tweets that were, had the hashtag COP17. Once it had found that, it would actually make a copy of this tweet and bring it into the ecosphere environment. Then it would scan every single other word within the tweet. So, for example, if you're saying, uh, if there's a tweet saying, Obama, Obama must take the US into the future and sign the new uh, protocol, it would see, ah, there's a couple of words here. For example, there's Obama, there's Kyoto, or there's, there's protocol, there's future. It would start to notice um, a number of words that were already in the system, and then it would start to prioritize. Okay, Obama is a tree, and the tree is much bigger. So then it would bring that tweet into the Obama tree, and um, that's how it would sort them. So some tweets would talk about a number of things, but obviously the most important keyword would bring it into the biggest tree. If the tree was not gaining a lot of tweets the next day, it would die. So just as in the plant world, if you, you have to feed something, you have to nurture it, and if you don't, it dies. And in, the, and, in, and in the world of nature, it's survival of the fittest. And that was the rule of the ecosphere. If a tree was going to die, it would be, be killed, literally be killed by other topics. So maybe the, the Obama tree, or for example, the Canada tree, Canada was a tree on the first day because they pulled out of COP17. The Canada tree was then eaten by the uh, carbon tree, for example. So as, Canada, as the Canada topic was getting less and less and weaker and weaker, and the carbon tree was getting bigger and bigger, the system would notice that some tweets within uh, the Canada tree were also um, talking with, had similar words to the carbon tree. So actually, the trees eat themselves, they eat each other, and this is exactly what's happening in the forest, for example, a tree dies, it becomes food for other trees. So these are the rules. Um, you can see a bit of growth there. I think this was um, yeah, probably within the second week. Also, when, the, when a tweet comes into the system and it scans all the words and it says, well, I don't know any of these words, um, this is some, somebody's talking about something completely new, then it would plant this tweet as a seed on the surface. And if more and more people started to talk about that, then out of that seed would grow another tree. Um, this is one thing that was important for us is that we could look from a distance at the discussion. So let me just go back there. This is like the grand view. You can see the whole climate change discussion as a whole. Then you were able to zoom in just by clicking in to, to the tree itself. Um, and then you could sort of surf from tweet to tweet, as you'll see here. This is like in the surf, the surf view. You can go from leaf to leaf. Obviously, every leaf around the leaf you're looking at is related in, in the topic clusters. We also allowed people to be able to tweet directly from the, from the system, which is over there. So um, this is an advertising case. Um, obviously, we didn't really have a message other than encouraging people to join and to, to use their voice. Um, so we wanted people to plant an idea and watch it grow. But the results, you know, we get measured on results, and results are important. You saw some of them in the, in the case form about how many media impressions and stuff, but the real results are here in our opinion. Now, the one thing about uh, CNN is CNN is a neutral brand. They don't really belong to any kind of extreme groups. So they might, show, they might talk about climate change on, at the, on the one hand. On the other hand, they also run TV commercials for mobile, for Shell, for BP. Um, they're completely neutral. So in the eyes of the, in the eco world, the, the real activists, they're living online, they're living on blogs, and they don't really like CNN because CNN is, is you know, helping everyone and just putting these sort of carbon or fossil fuel companies advertising on air. So this for us are the real results when the strongest digital activists around the world um, actually embraced the, the project and then tweeted. So, so all of these logos are companies that tweeted, or organizations that tweeted to their followers to join the project. And we're amazed. WWF in, in each country got involved. Of course, Greenpeace, um, Live Earth, the Carbon War Room, which is a very, very aggressive uh, activ activist, uh, clicktivist um, organization with Richard Branson. Uh, cute ones like the Sea Turtle Foundation or the, 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 the American National Forest Foundation. Um, and of course, Earth Hour. It was just amazing that these, these people felt that the ecosphere was relevant to them and belonged to them. And they helped us to spread it. Um, in terms of the show, 
uh, Road to Durban, a green city journey, the show that we thought was going to be boring, um, with Ecosphere inside it, it got an audience recall of 74%, which is almost the, 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 the top record for CNN International. And then, of course, we're, this, is, this is a marketing exercise. This is about money in the end. It's about ad space and stuff like that. As soon as COP17 finished and the Ecosphere project finished, we're, we, we sold the rights to uh, the Rio 20 uh, United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development. The, the, the Ecosphere was actually bought by another sponsor and then um, you know, rolled out for that conference as well, proving that the Ecosphere was actually a sustainable project, which is kind of cool. So we restarted it with a new hashtag, which was hash Rio 20, and we polished it up a little bit. We have to show you there was like a bit more pizzazz uh, as we entered the Rio 20 Ecosphere. And there we, we regenerated everything, like we said. We played with the design a little bit. Um, we wanted to create a different visualization, a different, uh, the same visualization, but a different look. We used a more chaotic tree algorithm. Um, you can see the, the branches are a little bit more wild and a bit more yeah, random. Um, we brought in more trees into the system. This time we had, I think, 35. And uh, yeah, in a different color scheme. So yeah, it would just look a little different. And here you can see, if I can get on the next slide, you can see the, a, a movie about a, sort of a, a screencast. Here we also invented, or we brought in a new, a new feature, which was a timeline feature, which would allow you to actually go back and forward in time. So you could see, as you can see, rolling backwards and forwards, you're able to go you know, days or weeks ahead or back to see how things had, had developed and which, which topics were most important on which days. So you can see. Unfortunately, the ecosphere is not online anymore. It was online for, for a year and a half. Um, it's, it was obviously very expensive hosting. Um, the whole system was using WebGL, so people were using uh, 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 Google Chrome and uh, Firefox to see this. Um, a full 3D experience right inside the browser. Um, yeah, very intensive uh, uh, in terms of, of hosting. So it just recently, I think two weeks ago, um, went down. We're very sad about that. Um, learnings, uh, we always like to talk about learnings because that's why we get together at these things. Um, for us, the learning was, uh, one thing we, we were happy about is that we started so negative, that we, we looked at the brief and we said, no, this is rubbish, this is, this is boring, people are, are not going to care about this. And out of our negativity, we didn't just come up with the idea, but we rewrote the brief. We, we, changed, the, we changed the purpose of this whole project, and we said we'd rather create a, a project for ourselves that, that involves the people in a, in, a, in a certain way, not just telling them to tune in at 8 o'clock. The other major learning um, f for myself definitely was, normally when you have an idea and you really like it and it's really part of you, you tend to kind of say, no, you know, bugger off, and you, and you, you tend to kind of turn your back on, on everybody. But in this, in this job, it was really a, um, an opportunity where there were so many hundreds and hundreds of people, even on the client side, coming in. And it just taught us that you should never take your idea and hide it away. You should involve as many people as you can, um, because they ultimately make it into something much, much more amazing than you had in your mind before. Thank you very much.